It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz on the Central Coast in San Luis Obispo, and we are joined today by Fred Strong. He is the Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Paso Robles in North San Luis Obispo County. He's also a national leader on several organizations. We'll talk about that momentarily. First, let's talk about marijuana. Uh -huh. uh, marijuana <laughs> regulation has finally passed the state of California, despite the fact that Prop 215 passed 20 years ago. Right, right. And there's a lot of appreciation for that, but there is some cleanup that needs to be done in terms of deadlines. We'll talk about that momentarily. What I want to talk about right now, though, is what your city is doing as it relates to cultivation. Because that really is kind of the controversy of the day. Should right. cities allow cultivation? Well, we took that up on January 5th uh -huh. at our council meeting, and uh, that was for the first reading. Right. And we decided that we were going to ban it. A complete ban a on complete cultivation. A complete ban on cultivation within the city. Now, now some see, we do allow yeah. local delivery, mobile delivery. Okay. But we also banned the brick and mortar type of dispensaries. And this was mostly because of recommendations from our police department, because there has been a history, especially with outdoor growth, that it has induced crime and robberies and, and violence. Uh, and we don't want that. Uh, other communities, for example, Grover Beach in this county, I believe San Luis Obispo City in this county, has banned growth for commercial purposes. Yes but will allow growth for personal purposes. And that's fine. But, but not your city, not Pismo Not Beach at this as well. point in time. What we did in ours, we, we passed the ban. Right. But we also noted and gave instructions to staff that when the state regulations are finalized and we understand what the state is actually right. doing in this regard, then we want to relook at it with full disclosure as to what our options are, what the, the pluses and minuses are, what the the possible uh, collateral well, damage might be me, and me, unintended consequences, yeah, et cetera. Let me ask you this. One could predict that in November, the voters of California, we know, will be presented with an initiative to legalize marijuana. Yes. We know that in several states, some of them deep red, have voted to legalize marijuana. Yes. Um, and so. I don't think it'd be fair to predict that the initiative will probably pass in November. There are many who believe that. Right, and I'm just I, saying. I never make assumptions. I, that's fair, but let's just say for argument's sake the initiative passes. All right. What then happens? For argument's sake, if the initiative passes, we already have on the books that there is licensing that can be required yes. for certain aspects of it. That licensing is already set up by law, and I sat on the committees that reviewed that for the League of Cities, right. and we negotiated with Senator McGuire on his bill, right. which is one of the three in the package, right. in order to get that local control. So that And that's licensing? That's a licensing that requires both a local license and a state license. Is that for growing or for selling? That's for growing, but it could be extended. If, right. uh, we're making an assumption, remember? I, I understand. Okay. So, so I, this, this, right. is, this is not necessarily reality. But if we're going to make that assumption, then we can also make some assumptions that we as l the local jurisdictions are going to want to have some control over this. Well, we're already been being right. given the right to tax certain aspects of it at the local level. Right. And, and as you may and know, these things yeah. have to be settled. And as you may know, sir, a couple of years ago, the city of Riverside uh, passed a land use ordinance to preclude the creation establishment of medical marijuana dispensaries mm -hmm. that went to the california supreme court and riverside won on a unanimous decision that's correct so at least under prop 215 the california supreme court has ruled that a city can as a land use matter preclude establishments that sell marijuana and that's how we have done this this particular one on January 5th. So let's, the growth, the cultivation right. was done as part of our, as an amendment to our land use ordinance. So I'm wondering Sorry. if marijuana is legalized. I mean, I know that we have land use ordinances for alcohol. The city can say where you can sell alcohol. Right. So couldn't a right. city say, even if it's a legal product, you can't sell marijuana in our city limits? Well, those are many of the questions that will have to be answered once the proposition comes right. to us and once we see what happens to it. If we make the assumption that it's going to pass, right. I want to see the language. Right. I don't know what's going to be in that language. Will the language address those matters? If the language addresses those matters, right, you may have then whatever to say. we have to do, right. we'll have to do within the parameters but of that language. But let's just say, 
we have a situation to face that we face a situation similar to the alcohol situation right. where you as a matter of land use can decide where alcohol can be sold. Well, and but also can, the state through the ABC. Right, but can you as a matter of land use, I don't know if you know this, I don't, can you say no alcohol sales in, your, in my, our city? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think that would, well, there's the old Green River laws. Right. And that would be similar to a Green River Will law. Explain what's but the Green Frank, River law? Green River, well, the Green, Green River, Wyoming, I believe right. it was, uh, that passed laws where no business could be open on Sunday. Oh, right. Oh, yes. The, okay. the, yes, the Sabbath laws. Right. The Sabbath, okay. Right. But this would be a similar thing. It's a right. prohibition of some type that is against commerce. Right. So th there may be... And those survived. That, that might come in. And those survived. Those right? survived. Uh, ultimately, I think they finally did right. away with most of them. Right. But it's like prohibition in this country. Prohibition failed. didn't work for alcohol. And arguably, it hasn't and, worked for and, marijuana. And arguably, arguably. Right. right. It hasn't worked for mm -hmm. marijuana for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. That this doesn't mean people aren't using it or can't get right. it. They just can't use it or get it legally. Right, right. And, uh, and there is a statistics too that every 45 seconds in the state of California, somebody is arrested for using marijuana mm. illegally. And is that worth that's, it? That's, right. yeah. Is it worth it? That's the question. Is, does society want to spend money to arrest Do we, personal marijuana users? Does government really mm. want to put in regulations that are contrary to the customs and traditions and the lifestyle of the people within the state. It's interesting you put it that way because in the final analysis, that's what that's what we're looking to. at. I, I want to shift gears, if I may, sir, and sure. speak about some of your other uh, activities. Sure. You were recently uh, it, it reappointed, I guess you could say, to an organization called NARC. No, we're not dealing with marijuana still. No. <laughs> we're dealing with an organization, the National Association of regional councils. And explain to us your involvement in this August organization. Well, well there's a number of things. Number yeah. one, that organization is an organization similar to the League of Cities, sure. which represents all the cities. This represents all your regional governments in the United States. Okay, so for example, just to explain, every I think every county has something called a COG, a Council right. of Governments. Either that or an Association of right. Governments, as in the Bay and, Area. Right, and so th right. you became a member of NARC through the COG in right. San Luis Obispo. And here, the members unanimously of the COG, which represents one from each city right. and the entire Board of Supervisors, right. unanimously re-elected me to I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I just, of course. Well, Congratulations. Thank you. Actually, I gave them a report on my last year's activities. And the county's uh, very lucky. One of the things was that we got the, the transportation reauthorization bill right. passed on a bipartisan Mira basis. Miraculously. And it was for more than one year. We got it for five years. Right. Not the 10 we wanted, but hey, to get anything through that Congress on a right. bipartisan basis was an achievement. Right. And I spent two weeks of time in Washington, D.C., going office to office and talking with staff on how the bill was to be drafted and talking to a lot of the electeds. You know, what and then I, I sent yeah. out over three, over five dozen emails right. when it really came down to crunch time. To, and and it goes to show you that here you are, you're a mayor pro tem of a fairly small city, yeah. but yet I'm looking at all the lapel pins, <laughs> and what they demonstrate is your involvement in regional, state, and national organizations. Right. So even, you, you can use the springboard of a city council on a smaller city to really effectuate state and national policy. Yes, you can. Now, you have to have the respect of your peers of at all of those levels. And I have had a background as a registered legislative advocate in Sacramento and lobbyist in Washington, I was going to say lo another word for a lobbyist. So, uh, it's all good. So I want to congratulate you, sir. That background helped. Um, his name is Fred Strong. He is the mayor pro tem of the city of Paso Robles in San Luis Obispo County, where we are today. My name is Brad Pomerantz. Thank you for joining us on Charter Local Edition.